All right, guys, I'm really excited to be joined by Jeff Selzenstein, owner of Tennis Evolution and former top 100 player in the world. He's in California. We got on court, done a few things, and now I'm going to ask him about how he was able to hit 130 mile an hour serves because I could really do with that. All right. All right, let's get into it. So as I did my on-court intro, I wasn't quite sure what we we're going to talk about, where this session was going to go. But you're going to see a great discussion from two coaches that have a slightly different way of teaching the serve. I think the serve is more of a throwing motion. I go to the throwing motion a little bit more to, to develop the understanding of the correct kinetic chain, to iron out some flaws. And I think Jeff does that too. But Jeff definitely wants to move away from the throwing motion to involve different parts of the body to generate a little bit more power. So it's a little bit more advanced. So we're gonna go from basic fundamentals to how you can generate more power on your serve. How would you sort of demonstrate just simple fundamentals that your average player, you know, we've got a lot of 3-0 to 4-0 yeah. kind of guys that are watching this. Sure. What would you recommend is just the simple fundamentals that, do you go with a throwing motion? Mm. It's a good question. I mean, I think the first thing that, that you have to decide if you're a 3-0 or a 3-5 is, do you want to have a continental grip? And you have to make that decision because I would say the majority of people at the 3-0 level are going to have that forehand grip. If you can move to a continental grip, uh, which is tricky and there's drills that you can use to do that, I call it more of a, a circular swing path. So, so when you swing and you go up to the ball, you're feeling like you're swinging up and over your body and it's, it's a completely different swing path than someone who's new to the game picking it up and hitting the ball. Now, the big question, and I know you have a way of doing this, is how do you get someone to do that? And uh, I don't necessarily focus on the throwing motion per se as like my go-to, uh, but uh, this is where I want to learn from you too. Uh, obviously, when I'm teaching and I'm doing the drills, there's an element of, of the arm and the elbow and the body going up to the ball in a throwing motion. Right. So, uh, I don't know, you go ahead and share your thoughts on that. Well, if I was to walk through sort of the tennis evolution, the serve evolution, yeah. um, the most important thing to me is the throwing motion. Mm -hmm. So, let's just say someone's got, we, we teach a lot of people with funky serves, right? right? So you might have someone doing all kinds of things. Right. We've got a guy over there kind of doing them. And uh, what I would recommend is just to get the throwing motion down. Right. So that would be, quite often I, I would be stood where you are and I'm looking for the racket to slide this side of the head, mm -hmm. right? And before it drops all the way down the back, I'm looking for the elbow to lead the way and develop this throwing motion. Now, yeah. when I work with six-year-olds or real beginners, mm -hmm. the throwing motion almost becomes like this. You know, you, right. that, that would be how a six-year-old might throw, right? Right. So to me, that's fine and I would have them face the strings to the target, elbow forwards, and to me, that's, that's how I would start it off. Now, as we get a little bit more advanced, I would, again, be just trying to keep the eastern grip for a while, mm -hmm. just develop that throwing motion there, Yeah. right? And, and once you've got that, then we can start adding the stuff onto it that we're gonna start talking about. The issue I think we have is people go straight to the continental grip before the throwing motion is developed. Mm. And then we have an issue of, if you don't have a good throwing motion, you are then gonna start scooping the ball in and doing things sure. that, that are a bit of a problem. Because the continental grip and a great serve requires the elbow leading the way and this kind of pronation. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have this throwing motion to begin with, even with an eastern grip, and then a coach comes along and says you should use continental. Yep. Well, you're not going to be able to do that. So a lot of times people develop serves like, like this to hit sure. the ball in the court because that makes sense with this grip. Yep. So for me, it's basing everything around the throwing motion and then over time getting a little bit more pronation through the hit, finishing this side of the body and then adjusting the grip to where you have continental. So yeah, it falls right in line with what you just talked about, and I call this the continuous swing drill. I just like to get in a comfortable stance like this with the continuous serve drill. So it's not going to be as, as extreme as my normal stance. My normal stance is a platform where I'm in here, okay? But when I go continuous, I'm in this line right here. And again, imagine, like you said, if you were to throw a ball, 
look at the look at look at my feet. They're they're pretty lined up, mm -hmm. slightly staggered. And so from here, what I'm what I'm working on doing is I'm trying to toss the ball and just keep everything moving. And there's obviously that relaxation happening. And so what I find is that when obviously people struggle with that, that's not easy. Mm -hmm. you know, I might be making it look easy, but it's it's a hard thing to do. But I've seen so many players that let's say they struggle with their shoulder turn and, and they bring their racket up and their, their elbows tucked in here. As soon as they start doing the continuous uh, serve drill, without them even thinking about it, now they're turning and coiling and getting that arm in, a, in that throwing arm position. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we've got this gadget here that we just used on a backhand, yeah. probably even more suited to a serve. This is what I think you're essentially doing is and the reason that I would always try and go towards a throwing motion first is you're trying to do the most efficient move possible. Now this thing is pretty heavy, 1.8 kilograms, so it's a bit too heavy, but if you've got the right technique, it's all right. But this is this continuous service motion here, That's right? right? So this is what I will be looking for everyone to do. As I say, you might start off and you might just be sort of pushing it towards the target, but ultimately you want this racket to be moving. And this is why I think the serve is a throwing motion, right? Sure. Now, what Jeff does <laughs> to hit 136 mile an hour, he that was many me. years ago. I'm not hitting 136 <laughs> now. Is, that was in 2003. So, I, if I do a similar serve to what I just did there, I would be throwing my elbow forwards down the court. And this to me just gets all the bits of the kinetic chain working. Mm -hmm. What you're doing then to add that extra bit is instead of going here, which as I said, I, I'd often be stood in your position asking to see this the racket this side of the sure. head, which you will be able to do, see on that one right there. Yeah. Well, what you do is a little bit more of a Sampra serve. Oh yeah. <laughs> sure you're aware of this. And you go this way a little bit. Sure. And this involves your shoulder a lot more, right? Yeah. And I'm this is how you're able to get a lot of power. We're not spoke about this, so I'm just kind of, yeah. this is my observation. So we go from a throwing motion where all the bits are kind of working together to this is my Jeff Solzenstein serve impression of going that way, which probably didn't look. But I feel right. like I can use this, and that really helps me to get a bit more power on it. Sure. But when we're starting out we're working with yeah. 3.0s, 3.5s, getting too much shoulder here, they end up skyhawking it. So and into let me, issues. yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain something here. I work with a group called Racket Fit, and um, it's called Making the Body Serve Connection. And what we've done at Racket Fit, we teach seminars all over the country and we work, we work with coaches and fitness instructors and we came up with 14 characteristics of the serve that are inefficient. And one of the things that we identified is there's something called breaking the plane. So um, it doesn't mean it's wrong because again, if it feels natural for someone to bring their racket back like this and go to swing, they're, they're, they're breaking the plane uh, but they're learning how to throw, like what you're talking about. What we found is that if someone does break the plane as they get to higher levels, then they're not engaging their lower body appropriately. So when you mentioned the Sampras, I kind of chuckled because what happens is uh, when, I was, when I was doing the filming for this, I was breaking the plane and I wasn't trying to. And Mark Kovacs, who's... And you're talking about me seeing the racket this side of your head. Correct. I mean, that so would be So if we draw quite, a line right here. That would be quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. about right but, here. But, so just yeah. drawing a line through the middle of the face. Okay. Now, Dr. Mark Kovacs, who's a serve guy, he was telling me, he's like, listen, Jeff, if you can feel more load in the back leg, mm -hmm. this is probably going to improve. And he was correct. So what happens is when you get into here, if you, if you know how to load your back leg, the racket actually naturally starts to drop and you don't feel as much stress in your mm -hmm. shoulder because you've used your back leg, you've loaded. What happens is most players, as you know, they don't know how to load their back leg. They get to their front foot, so then the racket leaks back here a little bit. And so it's just an interesting thing that, again, the stages of development, I agree with you. If someone's struggling to get the serve or get a continental grip, it's fine if the, if the racket comes back here. The pros do it. There's yeah. a lot of, even Isovich does it, Djokovic does it a little bit. It's not wrong, mm -hmm. um, but what you're seeing when my racket lays back like this is obviously someone who has a lot of flexibility yeah. in the shoulder, but I'm also using my lower body and my upper body like in one unit, and that makes the racket just 
drop back naturally. Not everyone has that flexibility, so yeah. then the racket's gonna leak back here. If we're going from my service motion to the Jeff Salzenstein service motion, uh -huh. I think it's really important to understand that as the racket drops behind the head, before it reaches down the back, before it even gets close to this, that my elbow is starting to lead the way, yes. which, is, is, which is the same as a throw because if I get stuck here and then I come out like that, now I'm just coming out as one right. piece. So I want to be feeling like as my elbow bends, as my arm bends, my elbow is rolling out. So for me, I'm trying, that's the first thing. If, if people are struggling to, to generate power, we're trying to get that throwing motion. I want to see the racket drop this side of the head. At the same time, I want to see the elbow, throwing the elbow down the court. And quite often I'll be asking, if I'm stood the other side, for them to throw the elbow to me. Sure. You know, feeling like they're throwing the elbow to yep. me. And then I like what you're saying, which is if you, at that advanced level, mm -hmm. this is a strong muscle, <laughs> yeah. right? You can get a lot of power. It almost reminds me, and maybe this is not quite right, but you're going from a throwing a fastball baseball to almost like you'd throw a, a basketball. Yeah. If I had to throw a basketball into the net over there, I'd have to use this to be, get more, mm -hmm. to use my muscles a little bit more. Yeah. So it's, it's a different kind of throwing motion. I, yeah, I have two, two points to make, and I'm loving this back and forth because it, it's giving me ideas, it's giving me things to share with you. Um, we talked earlier about you know, if you're tight with the, with the hand, even on the backhand, in another video we talked about this, when a player gets up into here, if their wrist is cocked like this, look what the it racket already comes back here. Okay. But if, someone, if someone's gonna do that throwing motion and they can, they can feel this, I call it staying in the phone booth. So trophy position right here is staying in the phone booth like this. So I, this is called ulnar deviation right here. So if you ulnar deviate your wrist, and then again, you go to throw the ball, you're not, the racket's not gonna leak as much. So it's gonna be vertical like this, and then it's going to drop back. So I think we should be helping players feel when they get to this position, it's kind of like this dead weight up here mm. rather than mm. gripping here. So this is gripping, this would be relaxed. And it kind of like, again, the racket's just playing up here and then it drops naturally. The other thing, and we see this a lot, what are most people doing when they're not playing tennis. They're sitting at their desk all day long, typing, they're on their phones all day long, right? So this is this posture uh, makes your spine, or specifically your thoracic spine, makes it go in like this. Well, to hit a huge 130 mile an hour serve like Sampras, or like I did back in the day, in conjunction with the elbow going up to the ball, what does the chest have to do? The chest has to go up to the mm -hmm. ball. And most people can't do that, especially as you get older, you lose the ability to breathe. So if someone's trying to throw their elbow up to the ball, but their chest is like this, it's not gonna go. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to point out that the elbow and that chest, they, the elbow and the chest need to go up to the ball and a lot of people struggle with that. So having a corrective exercise program to work with thoracic spine and shoulder is huge as well. Yeah, yeah, it's just, we got a lot of, we got a lot of great ideas and we got a lot of ways of, of maximizing movements in certain places. The issue that I think a lot of people have when they're watching YouTube videos is, you know, the, the idea of the day is for the chest movement and then next time you see them and they're trying to do the chest movement and the, it, all, it all looks like the, totally. the, you know, it all gets a bit weird because they've lost the, just the, the natural thing of just picking this thing up yep. and feeling like, you know, they can swing it smoothly and then trying to add the thing. So Jeff's 100% right of how you generate that huge power. You just got to make sure that you're not getting too fixated with one part of the motion that kind of throws off the entire. Yeah, the I think it, I think it's important. Again, like you said, we start with this idea of of a continuous swing and, and, yeah. and having the elbow go to the ball. And that's enough. Just like if I were working on my backhand, it might be, hey, just drop the hands. Mm -hmm. It's just one thing. Yeah. But what I think is really important with education is is to help people understand what's really happening. Mm -hmm. And then to your point, when someone's watching a YouTube video, they need to make sure they don't go on the court and try five different things or go down a rabbit hole. And that's why it's important to find a coach, you know, find yeah. someone like Tom or reach out to me so we can help you uh, have a plan. That's yeah. really important. Just one more thing. If you go to the description below, there's a link to tpatennis.com slash kick. And I've put together a 20 minute video on how to master the kick serve. So go check that out, it's free. 
and I think it'll really improve your serve. 